As in any area of the landscape, the principles of integrated pest management, or IPM, can be applied to turf grass. Justin, many homeowners are concerned about the environmental impact of their management strategies, and with turf, oftentimes uh, turf areas are managed with pretty high inputs of fertilizer and pesticides. How can we manage them in a more environmentally you know, benign way? That's a very good question. It's a question we often receive here at the uh, Extension Service too. So here, you know, we have an area of Bermuda grass. Mm -hmm. And so basically what we want to do, probably the best thing we can do for a, a proper IPM strategy is just to try to maintain a nice healthy yard. Well, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple actually. We don't have to make it so hard. We have some Bermuda grass here. Mm -hmm. So if we can mow that a little bit taller than maybe what some people want to. So say one inch, two inch, uh, even two and a half inches high to cut. Mm -hmm. the, if you can get a little bit higher mowing height on it, it does help the grass be a little bit healthier throughout the season. It when you mow it really low, you put stress on it. And when you mow it really low and put stress on it, then you basically are opening up the chance for insects, disease, and other problems mm -hmm. to really uh, make a healthy turf into an unhealthy turf. Okay, so mowing is one of our big things. Mm -hmm. What about water management or fertility? So with fertility, you know, for a, for a typical homeowner, they could put three pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year. Mm -hmm. And for most yards, that's going to be sufficient. And we're talking about the other nutrients, the phosphorus, potassium, mm -hmm. and others. We really want to do a soil test. And that's pretty simple to do. Just uh, take uh, randomly around your yard 12 or 15 little cores mm -hmm. and uh, put those in a little baggie, send them to the OSU Soils Testing Lab. They'll send you back a report that says, here's how much fertilizer you need for your yard. Mm -hmm. So we could really do a lot to protect the environment by only applying the chemicals that are necessary for our particular lawn. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if you can give the, the lawn the right amount of nutrients, then it's all going to be an overall healthier lawn and then you're going to have less inputs of pesticides. Mm -hmm. And so if we properly apply fertilizers to the yard to make a healthy lawn, we can be very environmentally friendly and reduce the amount of pesticides that we put into the environment. Now another way to manage those pesticides is to make sure we're using them in the proper areas, right? And That's right. you have a few examples. Why don't we look at one of those? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Justin, a lot of times pesticides are applied in areas where they're really not needed. The problem isn't a pest, but maybe environmental. That's right. You know, there's a lot of times we'll get calls from uh, homeowners and, and they'll say, you know, there's a brown patch in my yard. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And like here, here's an example of, uh, of we're coming out of a uh, spring here. We're having spring green up of Bermuda grass. And there's this area here that's just not greening up. It's, it's a big brown patch. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually... Uh, a combination of a couple of things. So if you, in your IPM strategy, if you have proper mowing height, mm -hmm. and if you're getting sunlight to the plant, you're going to reduce a lot of problems. Here's an example where we have, uh, this is a simulated like a tea box. We're here at the research station. So this is very low mowing height on this Bermuda grass, as well as we have a, a pine tree right here that provides shade to it throughout the day. So here we just have a mowing height issue and a shade issue, which is causing this big brown blotch here in the lawn. Mm -hmm. So we can manage this by raising up raising the mowing, the mowing height. height once it greens up. There's not mm -hmm. a, a lot of times there's not a lot you can do about the shade issue. You mm -hmm. can do some selective pruning of trees if you right. want to. Mm -hmm. But just raising the mowing height is going to probably uh, correct most of the problem we see right here. Now of course there are legitimate disease or insect problems in the That's landscape. Right. Mm -hmm. You know this time of year uh, one of the biggest disease problems we see on Bermuda grass is something called spring dead spot. Mm -hmm. And so spring dead spot is kind of like what it sounds. It's a springtime and you see a dead spot in your grass. Okay. And so usually just uh, patches of brown, maybe a frog eye appearance. And uh, there's uh, uh, several things we can do to combat this. However, we have to actually do that in the fall. Okay. So when you see it in the spring, it's like it's too late and there's not a whole lot we can do at this time of year. So with diseases and problems like that, we really don't recommend that the homeowner goes to the store, buys a pesticide from uh, you know, the home store and comes out and puts it in the yard. We'd rather they consult with a professional mm -hmm. or their local county extension person. So that way we can make sure it's truly a problem before we go put pesticides out in the environment. Very good. Now, one of the most commonly used pesticides in turf is herbicide. 
Um, but a healthy lawn is going to help combat weeds, right? <laughs> right. So if we can do all those things to make our lawn healthy, it's going to naturally just keep the weeds out. Mm -hmm. And so proper mowing height, proper fertilization, proper irrigation. So we don't want to over fertilize. We don't want to over water. Mm -hmm. Just manage it the right way. And we have fact sheets and things that can help people out with that. But if we can reduce the amount of herbicides that we use and still maintain a healthy lawn, I think that would make most people happy. And actually what I do in my home lawn is I'll just go out and scout every so often. And if I see weeds coming up, I can actually just pull them up myself mm -hmm. instead of having to go around and spray them with a herbicide. Now that takes a little bit of, of discipline. Yeah. And you have to like to be outside <laughs> in the yard. A little more time. A little yeah. time. But you can easily do it on your average home lawn. Now when we get into larger acreages, obviously that may become an issue. But for the average homeowner, they can just go around and peek around and, and pull those out. The mm -hmm. key is get the roots out. Yes. Don't leave any plant part buried. Mm -hmm. so. Pest control the old fashioned way. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Justin.